probably most people would say, don't do all the things that I did and definitely do these other things. But I would say I'm, I'm probably happier with the success that I have than the people that are telling me that, <laughs> than they are with their success, right? <laughs> don't listen to everybody's advice, right? So the first thing you gotta do is like, uh, tune in and find out what do you actually want to do? Because if you're gonna live your dreams, they have to be your dreams, right? Living somebody else's dreams uh, just isn't satisfying, even if you do it really well. Uh, ultimately, what you probably loved about the person that you're emulating is you love that they were being themselves. If you're trying to be like them, you're not being like them, right? You need to, if you want to be like them, you need to be you. Can you talk to me about worthiness and that idea and what other splinter ideas off of that you may use personally? Is it something that you're thinking of, I have value for other people? Like from an external perspective, people are looking at me and deciding that I'm, I'm valuable in some way, or it could be anything. It could be that I, I look good, I speak well, I provide, you know, I help people, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Or is worthiness something that's an internal perspective? So coming from inside where I feel like I'm adding value to the world, I feel like I'm doing the best I can and I'm enjoying when that uh, helps people and I'm also enjoying when I notice Ah, oh, that was kind of a mistake, or oh, uh, I could do that better next time. Like I'm enjoying and loving all of it, uh, because and the reason I bring it up is for me, uh, you could probably hear it already. The internal part is the measure that I use. So if I'm feeling good about myself, if I'm enjoying the way I'm interacting with the world, if I'm helping people, then I, like I'm inherently uh, expressing my value. If I start to think about how do other people look at me or how do other people perceive me, um, that, you know, for me and probably all of you too, that can kind of get me going in like a little spiral, right? Like I was, I mentioned to you, Skip, earlier, I was looking at my website. It's, you know, I'm thinking, oh, it's a little out of date. I want to update things. And when I look from the outside at that perspective, it's really easy to say, oh, I can think of 20 things that uh, I could improve or that I should have done years ago. And I get emails all the time from marketing people telling me all the mistakes. You know, would you like me to tell you 10 mistakes you made on your website? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, no, no, thanks. That's okay. I can pass on that <laughs> because um, that external perspective, while valuable, uh, is sort of misses the point. It sort of has, it ends up, we end up sort of chasing other people's opinions and ideas about what we should do, which may or may not have anything to do with what we feel inside. So I think, you know, just being my authentic self, even if it's not perfect, is always gonna be uh, the most uh, valuable, uh, you know, that's gonna be the most valuable thing that I can do is just just be me. And you know, that's true for all of you too. And I've got two branches off this topic that I kind of want to dig into. So that's the very internal, the sense of enoughness that we are, the sense of I belong and I'm contributing and, and I am a human worth being on the planet and how much worth. And in the state that you're talking about, it's like I, it just feels good to be alive is that state. So then when we talk about worthiness from a perspective of someone out in the world who say is an entrepreneur or has a like a side business or maybe they're a solopreneur or they run a business like you do or I do and we think about worthiness, where do we, can we explore that gap or that difference or the gradient between that self-worthiness and the worthiness of what we're creating in the world and how maybe they impact each other. Sure, yeah, the, well, the thing that comes to mind is that, you know, it doesn't really matter what face I put out. If I'm totally authentic being myself, if I if I make like a really professional looking Instagram account that's not really me, but looks really cool, you know, whatever, whatever people are making is totally fine. Um, but that's, um, some people are gonna like what you create and some people aren't gonna like it. And that's okay. So that's that's the, the first thing about worthiness is noticing that it's okay that I'm not for everybody. That's totally okay because I'm here to talk to a certain group of people and connect with them and they help me and I help them. And like, that's that's the relationship that I'm trying to foster. It's it's not everybody and that's that's totally okay. 
In fact, it's it's really funny for me. I've always thought of marketing from kind of the probably what people would consider the the wrong angle. I don't think of it like I want to try to get everybody to come and find my services. I think about it like I want to be myself so authentically that the people that aren't a match are going to be turned off right away. And they're going to go find somebody that does match them, that can help them. Because I, I can't help those people. If we're not a match, I can't help. And so I want those, I don't want those people to spend their time watching my stuff. And I want them to buy my products and then find out they need a refund. You know, I want those people to go find you know, their, their tribe, the person they connect with. And uh, it's, it's quite different than trying to make something that everybody will like. And, and probably it comes back to this, this worthiness that I, I, I don't have any question of if, I, if I'm worthy or if I have value because I, I love me. Like I, I really enjoy my, uh, my practice. I really enjoy when I make mistakes. I love my relationship with my wife, you saw me, you know, like, <laughs> like I'm really enjoying this life and enjoying being me. And so the question of worthiness doesn't really come up. Yeah. Unless, unless I start looking at myself from the outside, if I start looking at myself from the outside, then it's really easy to see, oh, here's some things that need to be fixed. But if I don't do that, if I just be myself naturally, then uh, things fall really nicely. There's this idea of when I'm trying to balance my own, like, okay, I've got my own piece and I've got other people that maybe uh, haters on social media and I've been in the media space for a long time and, and something that I have learned and I love is when you have an Instagram post that has negative comments they add to the algorithm and the post does better which then hopefully gets it to a certain percentage of everyone watching it that are gonna love exactly what you're doing so I sort of encourage polarization sometimes when it comes to content when it comes to a business because every now and then, like, let's say on the farthest end of the spectrum, someone goes to the Spirit Mind website and they say, wow, this is so woo woo. And they send it to like two friends to say, look how woo woo this is. But one of those people is actually kind of into it. And they're like, I, I kind of resonate with this. I feel they won't maybe tell their friend that. But in that way, being authentically you or speaking directly to the people that you want to help is going to find those people one way or another, even if it's through someone being polarized by the content. But when you're creating big things like this in the world that you want to resonate with other people, there's this, how do you decide what to work on? How do you decide what big goal? Because I know you worked on that project for five years and your wife has been working on it for her whole lifetime. How do you decide what to work on and, and how much energy to give to that? And also, how do you balance this like beautiful life you're describing with yourself with building something like that? Yeah, for me, like if, if, if you look back at my business history, uh, probably most people would say, don't do all the things that I did and definitely do these other things. But I would say I'm, I'm probably happier with the success that I have than the people that are telling me that <laughs> than they are with their success, right? <laughs> so, uh, and I say that just to, to, if you're listening to this, don't listen to everybody's advice, right? So the first thing you got to do is like uh, tune in and find out what do you actually want to do? Because if you're going to live your dreams, they have to be your dreams, right? Living somebody else's dreams uh, just isn't satisfying. Even if you do it really well, uh, ultimately what you probably loved about the person that you're emulating is you love that they were being themselves. And so if you're trying to be like them, you're not being like them, right? You need to, if you want to be like them, you need to be you, right? Just like, just like they are. And uh, so projects are the same way for me. So like with the spirit mind program, the reason I started on that was I'm always kind of looking at the bigger context of what's the biggest impact or help I can have on the planet right now. So we're going through kind of a interesting and sometimes challenging transition on the planet. Our consciousness is really changing in a way that's causing us to uh, be pretty confused in a kind of a strange state right now. Uh, like a lot of people have been experiencing like a lack of motivation or lack of passion or the, the things that I wanted to do or that I loved doing before aren't really that satisfying anymore or I was so excited about my, my social media and now I, I don't really care that much. Like, is there something wrong with me? Or I was just so good at business and now I'm just kind of, 
you know, kind of taking the easy road. Is that okay? And so where you know, the energy is shifting such that our natural desires are pushing us more toward an internal happiness and less of the out, outside focus. But as it happens, uh, it's really confusing. It can feel like we're taking steps backwards. Uh, so, so for me, what I try to do is I don't pay so much attention to those kind of ups and downs. What I look at is uh, right now, what's the biggest thing I can do to help? And with the Spirit Mind program in particular, it's like, okay, I've already done a lot of work getting energy work out to the masses, if you will. Like like you said, uh, Skip, it's uh, I took something that's can look very woo-woo, but somehow this is the feedback I get from a lot of people. I say, I'm not really into energy work. I always thought it was just this kind of crazy stuff. But then I heard you talking about it and it seemed kind of natural. It's like you were just talking about going to the store and buying groceries or something. It just seemed like a normal part of life. And it, that kind of resonated with me. I was like, well, yeah, because for me, it is a normal part of life. And um, so just being authentic like that, you know, connected and resonated. So I'd already done that. I already got uh, energy work out to a lot of, a lot of people. And that's, Mind Valley is so good at, at um, building things and promoting them and having them grow. So I, I trust that that's going to continue to to build. But when I looked at you know, what, what else is there? What's, what's the biggest problem that we have on the planet and how can I help? The answer, I was kind of surprised. The answers actually came from watching my wife, he saw me rather than watching myself. I looked at her and I saw that she's able to move through life in a very graceful, present way. She has all the things that uh, consciousness wise that I've been trying to get to, but she's not using all the tools or doing all the things that I thought I had to do to get there. So I was like, hmm, there's, I think there's a shortcut here. I think there's a shorter way, like a direct road, uh, consciousness wise, to get to that state of feeling fulfilled. And it, it goes back to what we started at the beginning. The, it has to do with uh, fulfillment from the inside rather than fulfillment from the outside. And uh, when I saw that, I was like, okay, this is kind of unique. This is something I haven't seen before. It's a next step for me. I want to lean into that project. So I, I chose it from that perspective. What's what's the biggest help I can have on the planet uh, rather than what, how can I make the most money? Because that's, that's probably an easier thing to do. Uh, but that's not so interesting to me. Like I, I like money too, but I want to make the biggest impact while I'm here. I'm just, I'm just here in this life right now. There's a big opportunity to change. How can I help us make that in a graceful, smooth way more than in sort of a not so graceful, <laughs> chaotic, <laughs> somewhat getting a, getting injured kind of way. I've got like a separate question I want to go to, but I feel like you had a cliffhanger there and I've got to go back to it, which is what was the shortcut? If you could give us just a summary of what is the shortcut that you were discovering and watching Isami? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, it actually took a long time to, to discover because um, Isami and I don't, we're not native speakers of the same language. Isami is a Japanese speaker. I'm an English speaker. We dabble in the other language, but neither of us are anywhere close to fluent. And so what I, what I learned from Isami was uh, through taking her classes with an interpreter. So I could actually, you know, listen to my wife, hear her teaching and her seminars. And over the years, it, it came down to something really simple. It came down to uh, realizing that we each have two minds inside. So we have the mind that we're used to that's um, kind of operating in the material world, thinking about things, planning, creating, assessing things that's really an expert in this realm. And that that mind, which we call material mind in our programs, is um, is what pretty much all, all teaching and classes that you take on almost anything, even spirituality, are all based on that mind. Because that's that's just what we're used to using. Uh, but the way the energy is changing on the planet is we're, we're starting to realize, uh, we're starting to wake up a different part of us, which my wife calls spirit mind. And this part, this mind is always full to begin with. So if you're trying to create fulfillment and you have a choice between these two minds, you know, you've got one mind that's seeking fulfillment, but always coming from lack. And you've got one mind that's uh, always fulfilled to begin with. And so it's like, ah, oh, okay, this one, 
using this one, it, if I want to feel fulfilled, which is a better choice? <laughs> it's like, I uh, start with one that feels full from the beginning. And then uh, just to expand a little bit on that, um, the next part was realizing, oh, it's, uh, it's not one or the other. It's actually once I wake up this spirit mind and get to the point where I can sort of relax my ego mind, my material mind, um, it can come back into the center and then expand again. And then I've got both of them in harmony. And this is where I go back to the place where oh, I'm able to show up and feel productive and my mind is working again because it's rooted in my spirit or in my true desires rather than being rooted in the external world. If someone is feeling right now like either they want to access this feeling right now and they just want to feel what that feels like or that they feel maybe like there's a wall, they're, they're blocked off from this feeling if we're talking about it and they feel like they can't access this state what's a what's a jeffrey allenism to feel this feeling either more or maybe for the first time in a while yeah good question skip you hit right on the the challenges of getting people into spirit mind uh, so one it said just engage the idea that this is my natural state like you don't have to grow up you don't have to change you don't have to uh, learn anything your natural state is a state of spirit mind. It's, it's, it's inherent in you. So all you have to do is remember. You don't have to learn anything. There's no special technique that you have to do or achieve or 10 years of study you have to do or anything. You just have to say, okay, somewhere inside me, or it'd probably be more accurate to say, I'm inside <laughs> this greater me that's the universe, that's uh, spirit mind. And Right now when I'm saying it, I can feel people on the call starting to like open up a little bit and feel that, right? So that's there. That's within me. And in some ways, uh, Marissa, when she says I am enough, what she's doing is kind of waking this up too. She's saying, ah, remember, I'm enough. I'm enough. You know, so she's she's tapping on this spirit mind energy to help you remember that as well. Uh, and then the if you're feeling like you can't get there, it's always the same reason. It's because we're all so attached to our brilliant thinking mind that assesses things as good or bad, as right or wrong, and uh, plans things and has ideas and goals and dreams. Like this is what we've been trained to invest all of our time and energy in. And that this is the, you know, ramping this up and being more brilliant is how we're gonna get to success. And that was true up until probably 40, 50 years ago, right? And then it started changing. And now, especially in this time and then moving forward, that's becoming less and less true. So putting all your energy into the what worked before is starting to work less and less and less. And this, uh, so you have to learn to basically to let this quiet down enough that you can sort of slip inside of spirit mind. And then you'll find, ah, oh, they, they actually work beautifully together. But when the, when your mind is out here and you're not rooted in spirit mind, uh, you're sort of just rooted in your own fantasies and ideas or other people's fantasies and ideas. Yeah, it's, it's a little deep here, Skip. I'm not sure if, uh, you know, if you're catching here, but <laughs> you know, when I talk about energy, it's, it's hard to put energy into words. Yeah. yeah. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. If you're loving this, please give the channel a subscribe, a like, leave a comment below or a review if you're on a podcast platform. Thank you so much and enjoy. I have a very material mind question um, to, to, to bring it into the practical, which is very material. For the next seven days, let's say I want to be more in my spirit mind. I would recognize that maybe number one, focus on the feeling that enoughness and that I am, I'm worth everything. I'd, I'd go a little bit different direction. So like uh, the practices you're saying, these are good, but these are all things that you're going to do with your mind, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so the more the more that you feed this, the more it's going to grow. And what you, what we want to do temporarily is let this calm down a little bit so that your spirit mind can wake up. So I would say instead is, um, if you're going to do it for seven days, is start to observe yourself without judgment. So just go about your normal day, but also have a part of you that's noticing what you're doing. So for example, I might, I'm doing a little recording for Hisami. So I'm, I'm the audio engineer in this case, and she's talking and 
uh, the dog wants to come in the room. And so my brain's like, ah, that dog. You know, this comes up automatically, right? And so I'm able to what, observe that and go, oh, interesting. I'm, I'm in a space right now where so even something little makes me frustrated. Oh, huh, okay. So when I notice that right away, it has nothing to do with the dog, right? I'm just noticing what's happening with me. Oh, okay, I'm gonna take a breath here and kind of like settle back into my space. Why don't I make a space for the dog? I'm gonna open the door, let them in on the bed, and then like calm down a little bit. I'm like, oh, interesting. I think my dog was actually reaching out to help me relax because I was getting a little amped up, <laughs> you know? And so just being able to observe yourself without judgment even if you're doing things that you think you should judge yourself for, you would normally judge yourself for, in particular, notice those without judgment. Just always see yourself from love. If you can do this, you're you're engaged in spirit mind. Yeah. Okay, so you dropped a quote on me years ago that is another one of those Jeffrey things that rattles around my brain, and then I'll bring that up, which is intuition is not a question, it's an answer. And I'm connecting that right now with the dog where it's saying, oh, maybe what's originally perceived as a mistake or a problem is actually something that's helping me be better or it's an answer or it's, it's, a, it's a part of the perfection of what's happening. My conspiracy theory is that the entire universe is conspiring to help me be happy, healthy, balanced, uh, fulfilled. And so all the things that are coming in are conspiring to help me. So just like in that case, uh, yeah, something was out of balance within me. And so I got a little feedback from the universe. In this case was my pet, but it could be some, a coworker. It could be your relationship partner. It could be uh, your family or your kids or parents. You know, you're getting a little feedback on where you're at. It's not, a, it's not about them, right? So it, 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 there's parts about them too, but first you want to look at uh, how is that? How is that helping me? Or how am I responding? And can I see myself with love instead of judging myself? Judging myself, judging them, or judging that I'm judging myself. Don't get into that trap, right? <laughs> Meta judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have? Do you have any daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly practices for people to like? Do you have a calendar reminder that goes, hey, remember to love yourself. Remember to, to judge less and like let it go. Because I feel like the material mind will get so caught up in life after hearing this that people might get back and I might get back into thinking about these and forgetting this conversation and this feeling of this conversation. I've tried that before. Like I've tried to put like a reminder in the phone that says relax, smile, meditate, you know, things like this. It said, I think the act of putting it in the phone probably helps, but then once it's in the phone, it doesn't matter if it ever goes off. Uh, it doesn't seem to, um, it, it, you know, within a day or two, it's just a, another notification that you ignore, you know, right? So it's, but, but the act of saying, oh, I'm going to lean into a future where I'm smiling more, where I'm relaxing more, where I'm enjoying myself, are coming from love more and that's that's definitely worth doing mm. so let's let's go forward in this chain of thoughts now that we know this now that i'm going to assume everyone is embodying this forever they have this deep worthiness they're always going to be perfect they're going to remember this and this interview changes their life we go forward maybe four weeks or a month two months and i'll just say me right okay so i run this big business and now that I feel worthy, I'm only ever going to see massive growth and success and achieve every dream I could possibly imagine. Right? Right. You know the answer there, Skip, right? This is a setup. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, a lot of times we think that. This is, this is what we want to happen. We want to per perfect ourselves in a way or grow in a way that uh, life is going to be beautiful in every moment forever beautiful from the perspective of what we want to happen, not beautiful from the, from the perspective of how we're living through what is happening, right? And 
And that's a big distinction. If, if you have a concept of how things have to be, um, it's not always going to work out that way. Like life has its ups and downs. Our health goes up and down. Our friendships uh, flourish and end. Relationships come and go. Uh, you know, money comes and goes. Like everything uh, is in motion as it should be. Like that's the beauty of life. And so uh, the, the trick to spirit mind isn't about feeling that you're on top of every game all the time. It's that you're in the moment and you're present. And it doesn't matter what's happening, what challenge is there. Like everything is giving you this feedback of like, ah, here's, here's how I'm experiencing this. Here's where my rough edges are and I can smooth them out. Here's, here's another chance to enjoy something, uh, even if it's not a pleasant thing. It's really hard to put into words, but it's, um, everybody is kind of trained to chase something that's not there, which is uh, that the material world, that your body, all these objects around us are going to come into some sort of permanent harmony where there's never any problems. Like that's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry to break it to all of you, but that's not going to happen. So, um, but it's okay. It's okay because regardless of what's happening in your life, you can still uh, see it from love and see yourself from love and still be fulfilled, even if you don't have every single thing that you imagine you need to be fulfilled. Because it doesn't have anything to do with all those things. It just has to do with uh, what's what's happening internally, right? There's a quote. Um, it's not even a, actually, honestly a quote. But there is an idea that the last time that you and I spoke, uh, I was in Mount Shasta, um, probably nearly in the fetal position, in so much emotional pain. And after we talked, I came up with this mantra for myself that I believe may help a lot of people. And I've got to give you credit because you didn't give it to me, but it came from you, from our conversation. And the mantra was surrender, allow, enjoy in that order so it was like anytime these really tough emotions or thoughts were coming up i said okay step one just surrender it step two just allow it to exist and step three enjoy that tough thing and just realize that's part of my journey yeah oh that's beautiful skip those are really nice it reminds me of when you say um say those three words i think of a river flowing right and I, I love outdoor adventures. That's just part of me. I've always been kind of a, an adrenaline junkie and loved the outdoors. So if I'm in a raft going down the river and the river is going to change over time, sometimes it's going to be really kind of boring and smooth. Sometimes it's going to be class five rapids. And I love all those things. Like I love the excitement of the challenge. I love it when it's really peaceful and I can relax. Uh, when the river dries up and I'm just sitting there with nothing to do, like all these things can be very beautiful if you're able to be present in the moment. But if you have an idea, like I need to always be in class five rapids or I'm a failure, uh, that's, that, you know, that's going to be very difficult. But if you can adapt to sort of whatever situation you're in, in the moment and, and really love it, then everything's beautiful. Everything's fun. Yeah. Ooh, I just feel like I got called out so hard there in the best way possible. I'm I'm definitely one of those people that my material mind likes to get into that zone of if it's not intense, I can't be there. And so I, I love that. Um, I love that. So you said this thing earlier that I want to go back to, which is the question that you ask yourself for determining your season of life, your next phase, what you want to work on was how can I help the world the most? with whatever skills I have available. I want to ask, number one, how do we think about, feel into what our question might be when it comes to that North Star of setting our goals for life? I remember in, I don't remember if it was in conversation with you or if it was in one of our interviews prior where you said that Hisami always says the goal of life is to create happy memories and that's it. And that's what she said. And Hisami is just one of those people where she just says like one thing and it's it's like four words and you go, oh, yep, that feels that feels pretty final and accurate. I wonder 
number one, how do you go about that? And number two, if there's some context there, I know you love the outdoors. I know you were a mechanical engineer. I know you were an energy healer, a software engineer. So you could have done all of these other things. And maybe if we think about this spirit mind idea of, you know, of course, you didn't need to do anything different at any point in time um, to contribute more to the world. I think just being a person who has that like connection to that worthiness is probably all you you ever need to do. And, and if you're not doing it, it's probably great, too. Right. <laughs> how do you think about that? How how would you encourage us to think about that or feel about that? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good question, Skip. So like for everybody, you kind of have to find your own internal question. Like it's not going to be how can I help help the most? That's that's some of us have that as an internal feeling, right? Um, you know, mine actually came from, I, I was meditating when I first found that the ability to be able to communicate with spirit guides, um, after getting through kind of like the, the mundane things of asking them like, Hey, am I going to get a raise this year? Am I going to find a girlfriend? You know, like the, the, the things that we would, uh, you know, that we would ask if we had, you know, this guidance that we could tune into, you know, I asked all those things and eventually, uh, things got deeper past mundane and at some point I was like, why am I here? Like, what, what's up? What, why am I here in this life? And the answer was really simple. This is from my guides, but you're right. Hisami always gives these really simple answers too. But my guide said, uh, you're here to be of service. And I was like, wow, that that concept had never crossed my mind. And I was actually a little bit embarrassed because I thought, oh, service. I thought that was something that somebody gave me. Like I went to a restaurant and there was like a server helping or I went to the gas station and there was somebody, a service attendant. It never occurred to me that I was here to be of service. And like something really woke up in me. I was like, whoa, I didn't know I was so self-centered because I'm a good person. I love myself, but I realized in that moment, wow, I never, the fact that it never occurred to me that I'm here to be of service to others was kind of shocking and eye-opening, right? And uh, and from that time, for me, that was that was always the thing to tune into. How can I be of service? And really interesting from a business perspective, when people talk about making money and creating a, a strong business, uh, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. But what I realized is if I just focus on this, like how can I be of service, then uh, money will flow back to me. Like money is sort of the return on investment of helping people. I'm providing something valuable. And then so money's coming back to me. It's it's a really um, uh, sort of internal way of creating a business rather than uh, doing research and finding what people need and all that. It's just like, how can I be of service? What do I have to give? And wh what am I internally inspired to do and to give? What feels good when I'm giving it? Not like... Um, something I have to do or something that's a big challenge or something that's, uh, uh, causes me to, you know, requires me to learn a lot of things that I don't know already. Right. Like inherently all of you right now have the ability to be of service. If that's, if that's your thing. Um, some, some people are just here to, to experience world and grow. So that's totally okay too. If you're here just to, uh, I'm here to experience myself from love. Well, wow, that's a great one too. Right. So then every moment you can think, am I doing that? Is there something um, I can shift? Or like I said, just sort of observing yourself and noticing when you're when you're not doing that. Ah, here's a place I didn't even know, but when I interact with my pets, I'm not really going from what I believe is my, you know, what I, my passion or my goal or where I'm, you know, I'm not being of service in this moment. For my dogs, it's different. Or for this person, it's different. Or <laughs> These are funny examples, but... Uh, being able to observe yourself, uh, that'll give you all the information you need. What's your next steps, how to correct, uh, what to do. Uh, it, it's all about just observing yourself from love. Yeah. But it's something you said there, it kind of went around in circles a little bit, but um, when you, you mentioned what Hisami said, that was a really interesting perspective too. She said, when I said, what's the, what, a lot of people ask, what's the meaning of life or what's the purpose? And she said, oh, that's easy. My my purpose is to create happy memories. And 
what she did with that is she brought it into present time because in any moment you can create happy memories. Like we can create happy memories right now. Doesn't require any money, doesn't require any special circumstance or clothes or, you know, anything. You can create a happy memory anytime by yourself or with others. And, and those are things that you keep. Once you create them, you know, they're done. They, they just keep building and building. But if I have to create happiness in the future, I have to create a million dollars or a new house or, uh, you know, some, some kind of relationship or something. Uh, those are things that are all not now. Those are all things in the future. It's great. I hope those things will, can come through too. But if you're not present in this moment, you sort of missed out on the whole game altogether. Probably when you create those things you think you need, you won't be present in those moments either. You'll be looking at the next, next thing, the next thing. So being able to slow down and be present right here, create happy memories is probably the most uh, succinct and easy uh, practice for feeling fulfilled. Hmm. Love that. You gave some really, I think, valuable examples of different like mantras. So if yours was to serve humanity as much as I can right now, and then you said for other people, maybe it's to experience life. For some people, maybe it's to really experience love. If, if you were to just riff on a few more of those to, to start to kind of, I think it's going to resonate with certain people and they might pick one out and it might like create a response in them. What would be some other ones you've seen with students or um, just heard or are feeling? Well, I just have, I kind of tune in right now to who's, who's listening. So the, the, the big one that I see is people wanting to, uh, that's probably why they tuned into this program in particular, people wanting to feel like uh, they're complete, like that they're, or enough, you know, that there's uh, this story that I've been told that there's something wrong with me or that I need to be somebody else isn't a true story. It's just a story that somebody told me. And whoever told me that story probably told me that story because somebody told them that story. You know, we just, we kind of pass these, these little myths, these little, uh, you know, superstitions and stories onto each other. Um, it's not that bad people tell you something and then mess you up. It's, it's not that at all. And so that's a big one. So I'd say if, if that's the thing, it's, um, I would lean into just noticing yourself from love. So my, my purpose is to love myself, but not, not from the outside, not, you know, you have to say, my purpose is to notice that I love myself, right? You don't have to change to love yourself. Just start noticing that you do, right? <laughs> so, notice that you love yourself, right? So that's a great, that's a great one right there. If, um, I'm just kind of looking again at the energy. If, if your goal, if you feel like your goal is to create something, like creating something in business or, um, so uh, that one's really interesting. So that one has to do with that one has to do with impact too. It actually has to do with there's something that I want to see in the world. I want to see spread or grow in the world that I can help with. So for some people, it's it's a cause. Like it might be, I love animals, and so I want to do something to help animals live better lives or. I love technology. I want to make uh, this cool technology that I love available in a way that other people can access it that aren't like me so that more people can fall in love with it and can enhance their lives. Or um, I love relationships and somehow I have got a knack for it. So I want to help people that don't have a knack for that find their happy relationship or find how they can relate to people in a way that they love. I mean, so for each of us, it's a little different. It, it can be something very specific like that. Mm. And I love this thing that you just did that I want to point out, which is you found a very particular thing and then you sort of investigated how to zoom it out and how to make it, uh, bring it to that very spirit level of what it really is. Um, you know, uh, like I might cut this out of the interview, but there's some like some personal context that I wonder what your reflections are on that I think some people might relate to. 
I've had this very consistent pattern of I'll I'll do something that people might consider big or important and as it's sort of happening I'm just sort of enjoying what's happening and then I um, want to go and like take a break and I'm, I'm in that place of I say that fulfillment is the harmony between peace and pursuit and so I like seasons of peace and I like seasons of pursuit but it it seems like every time I, I go into peace pursuit comes after me <laughs> and goes I've got your next job I've got your next mission if you will and then it's this very strong feeling that uh, and I know the feeling because it's the same feeling every time where it's sort of an assignment, I feel like. And we're in one right now um, with RTT and bringing all these things to life in, in a way that I can and I can help with. And so my mantra has always been, I want to live a beautiful life. And a part of me living that beautiful life is helping other people find that beautiful life for themselves. And that can be doing things or it can be not doing things. Um, there's really no way to, to mess that up other than the perspective that your life is beautiful in all of the things. I can resonate with the things you're saying, Skip. It's the, the trick is to, is to receive them with that... Um, spirit mind part of you so kind of with or you can even say with your spirit you know receive them from spirit or spirit mind because i'm just what i'm doing is i'm kind of watching the energy of people that are that are watching the call that's what i do right instead of thinking about things i just tune in and just here in the moment and, and see what's going on and and so some people hear your message and it really lands in their heart and they and they resonate with it and they get it but some people are, are listening to your message and they're hearing like um, kind of like a, a measuring stick that they like a new measuring stick they've got to use to see how they're doing. And so if you're feeling that, if you're, if you're hearing this and you're hearing like, oh, here's a new measuring stick that I can use to, to assess whether I'm doing well or not, uh, just definitely, definitely throw that away because that's, <laughs> right. So that's a, that's the, that's the hard part about, you know, watching interviews like this is uh, you, the takeaway, you want to take away something that's like a note or a to do or something that you can apply. Um, but that's not the actual value here. The value is, is, is more internal. It's like you had a little aha, something woke up. You don't have to take a note about that. That'll sustain, Just stay in that aha moment. And you've already reached the goal. Like you don't need to take a note so you can get back to it later. Just get it right now. Uh, be in that moment, be in that feeling. Yeah. If and when, and I believe that everyone here is going to experience times where the material mind is racing. Is there any practice, and I can share one you've taught me before, um, that I actually use. I, I, I've probably, it's probably like the fourth time I think I've said something about Jeffrey has taught me this in the past and I still use it to this day. So take that as a grain of salt that you will remember certain things because of the way he teaches it. But one thing you've taught me, and I'm curious if there's others like this, um, and you taught me this with your rock climbing story, but it's to literally as gently as I can wiggle my fingers together and just focus on feeling my skin. Just focus on feeling this very gentle touch in my fingers. And I do it for 10 seconds. And it just, it like, for some reason, it just works. <laughs> And it just brings me right here. Yeah, that one's actually from my wife, from Isami. You know, and she she was oh. she's got a really interesting perspective. Like she she used to come to my classes in Tokyo when I was teaching energy tools and teach people how to ground, work with their chakras and their aura, and and tune into guides and intuition and so on. And it was really fun because she she would always have a completely different perspective afterwards. And so we were one time we were kind of talking about uh, how would she do the same things. So how, when I do, when I talk about grounding and feeling present in the body, I do it like by visualizing. I'm going to visualize myself being grounded, maybe a waterfall or a tree trunk, and like just trying to feel myself coming back in. And Isami says, "Oh, that's easy. I would just touch something." So she's like, "You can just touch your hand like this, you know, or like this, or." Uh, and she says, "That's it. Now you're grounded." I was like, "What? I mean, <laughs> it's it's that simple." It's like. Oh, okay. But then when I look at the energy, what she's doing, 
Of course, because this brings you into the present moment. You're focusing on something that's happening now, rather than something you're imagining might happen in the future, that you're worried about or that you're hoping for, or obsessing about something that happened or didn't happen in the past, something that you said or didn't say. Like all, all those things about future and past uh, aren't important right now. Like the one thing that's important right now is right now, because this is where you are right now. <laughs> right? And so this brings you back into that, just touching something. It could be this or, or your skin or anything. Yeah, really simple tool. Now, th this is, I, I'm just going into, um, I don't want to call it the, the normal terminology, but let's say someone really embodies this and they go into this spirit mind and, and the way we would describe it right now is complete fulfillment and happiness now and forever and they stop doing everything and they don't go back to work and they they realize that so many parts of their life um, or they feel like or think that so many parts of their life are not aligned with who they really are where do we where do we go from there like what I'm talking about from spirit mind is being just being aware of yourself. It doesn't have anything to do with that you're going to be perfect or uh, the situation's going to be perfect, right? <clears throat> and so uh, the trick is to be present in this moment, regardless of what's happening around you. So, um, but it's it's true. I've had a lot of people, especially uh, people listening to my energy work classes, that say, "Oh, I want to, uh, I want to be an energy worker too. I want to be an energy healer." So maybe I, should, you know, Jeffrey quit his job and became an energy healer. Maybe I should do that too. And I, I always say, uh, you know, be careful not to get too literal when you're listening to me or or anybody else. You know, I'm I'm telling my inspiring stories because uh, when I face challenges, those are the the choices that I made or that fit for me, or sometimes that didn't fit for me. But I noticed ten years later, <laughs> you know, it came back into a fit, and. Um, so, so for you in the moment, like your, wh whatever feels like it's your strongest challenge right now may actually be the perfect place for you. So if you're, if you're just dying to get out of your work or you're just super bored, bring a different awareness into that work. It could be that you're the person that's going to change that situation for everybody, that you're going to, you're going to be able to uh, bring some light into that stagnant energy that you're not enjoying, whether it's at work or um, friendships or whatever. And sometimes the opposite will be the case. Sometimes you'll notice that uh, I suddenly I just have permission to leave. It's time for me to exit this situation and create new ones, whether it's relationships, jobs, you know, and so on. But it's, it's up to you each time to kind of decide which is which. Uh, there's no, there's no real rules to follow or like formula you can fill out. It's just uh, keep tuning in, feeling what's right for you. And uh, you'll know, like all of us have that, have that feeling at one time that all of us have been, uh, been in a room where we don't know anybody. Um, we see somebody and we feel something, we feel something lights up. I want to talk to that person. I want to connect with that person. And then when you do, it's beautiful and I become a friend. You know, so uh, that's that's a good example. You had a feeling and you you knew. You didn't need to know why you knew. You just knew, right? So, yeah, so I'd hope I I'd hope people wouldn't wouldn't do that situation where they just like expect, oh, it's all gonna be bliss forever and I'm gonna stop acting in the outside world. Because well, uh, having your being in tune internally and being able to be inside spirit mind with your with your awareness doesn't mean that you stop uh operating and acting in the outside world or that you that you stop thinking but a lot of people get confused that way they're like oh um my normal way of thinking is that uh, i need to determine what's good and what's bad and then squash the bad stuff and raise the good stuff and so i learned this new thing that spirit mind and so then that must be the good one and this material mind must be the bad one so i'm going to try to like squash that and raise this one up and i'm going to always have this and i'm never going to go to work <laughs> or think anymore <laughs> it's like well, not exactly, because that's all material mind thinking, right? So uh, this uh, dualistic thinking of good and bad and right and wrong, uh, the, 
a spirit mind is a third perspective. So it's a perspective of wholeness or oneness and everything fits in there. So the good and the bad fits in there. Everything's, everything's okay. Right. So it's, uh, it, it's just a different way of, it's a different way of perceiving and observing the world. And you're not going to just have that one. You're going to have both. Like I have the side of me that assesses things as good and bad, or I want it, or I don't want it or right or wrong. And I have the part of me. That's why we say you have two minds. I, I still have that mind. I always will. And I, I love that mind. It's really productive and helpful sometimes, but it's not a good ruler. It's a tyrant like that, that material mind is a tyrant. But I also have this other mind that is always coming from love. And this one is a really uh, beautiful, wonderful leader that can include my, you know, wonderful yet sometimes crazy material mind as well. You know, so that's, that's the kind of goals. Like I'm going to have both. I'm going to love them both. And uh, now suddenly things are moving forward. Final question for you, Jeffrey. Can you describe when you drop into that spirit mind or that feeling of, of worthiness, wholeness, fulfillment of you, you couldn't be unworthy with anything, just that total feeling of, of wholeness. What does it feel like for you? Uh, ah, yeah, interesting. Um, well, for one, it's not actually about me. So it doesn't feel like uh, I'm, I'm inherently worthy. It's a, it's a collective consciousness, right? So I just noticed that, oh, everything is beautiful. Like everybody that I'm interacting with is beautiful. The whole dance is beautiful. Being here in a body is really beautiful and wonderful. Like I, I love this game. I love this experience, even though it has ups and downs and pains and challenges and, and bright spots and dark spots. Like it's just the, something is so beautiful about all of it. So for that's the feeling that I have. Are there physical sensations for you when you really let yourself sit in that? Yeah, probably. Like right now, as you as I kind of tune into that, I don't usually think about that, but I can feel like, oh, I feel a little bit like flush, like my blood is flowing. You know, it's like I feel uh, alive. I feel like, um, like smiling. I feel hopeful. I feel... Um, kind of excited, but not in the way that, that I would be excited if I was, you know, just, just using my material mind. I'm excited in a, a different way. I'm excited for the silence as well, not just the parties. This, this mind is, is excited about the parties <laughs> and it doesn't want the downs, right? <laughs> but, but this one is like, ah, it's, it's all really beautiful because I'm here. I'm having an experience in this body, in this life, right now, talking to Skip, talking to all of you. And it's wonderful. It's beautiful. I'm making happy memories. Wow. Thank you for all of that, Jeffrey. When people absolutely fall in love with you or deeper in love, if they already knew you, where can they go to get more Jeffrey? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Two places. I uh, go to my website, which is I'm And then you'll find out kind of, you know, both my energy work training and the new training spirit mind that I'm doing with my wife. You can also go to spiritmind.com if that's the one that really resonated for you and just focus on that one. And uh, yeah, and just follow your heart. You know, the reason I've got several different programs is that I want to help many people. So not every program is for every person. So really tune in and feel like uh, I'm excited about this one. If you feel like I have to take this one or I should take that one, um, probably back up a little bit. Which one are you excited and enthusiastic about? You know, take that one. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Um, I had a really incredible experience. This was definitely a happy memory for me. And I think it was a happy memory for everybody watching. And I hope they can come back and, and really bathe in this energy again and again. Um, yeah, I just appreciate you in my life. So thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks, Skip. Thanks, everybody.